<laughs> what is going on, everybody? We are back with the Pound and Slash Marvel Boom. Media Podcast. This is the Comic Corner. I'm Slash. I'm Pound. We're here. And we're here. We're, we're excited. We're doing this. Um, we Gilgamesh I, here. I, I have something funny to tell you guys. I have absolutely been unmotivated to read these. Reason being, hmm? reason being, um, again, I'm typically not a Stranger Tales fan. Yep. So when I, I see, oh, you know I feel. when I see things pop up where it's like Strange Tales, and then uh, Tales of Mystery or Tales to Astonish or whatever, I usually start to get kind of bummed because I'm yeah, like, it takes you out. It's there's two stories per, and one of them is always 100 percent almost pointless. And then one is going to be like a storytelling, which is real. That fucking, was the that whoa. was the pointless one. Well, yeah. Then you get oh, wait, wait, my bad. Then you get ones that are like, wait a minute, you don't know how to use your power. <laughs> You get, you get um, that one. So I didn't even finish reading these until last night after work. Right, so he, he told me this at work. I said, I, said, I finished them because I already knew what ass this was getting ready to be. So I finished like them like two days ago. <laughs> now, I say that to tell you this. I actually almost liked all of them. Oh, wow. Um, as I actually started reading. The, the, I actually had a moment in one of these in the office when I was reading it. That I got so excited, I actually jumped out of my chair, hit my hands, and I was like, let's fucking go. I was stoked. He's about it to was... scare everybody in the office. Like, oh my god. Uh, no, I made sure nobody was in there. <laughs> I wasn't about to make an ass out of myself in front of people. I mean, I normally would. Well, I say, that's but... like your calling card. No, I'm but not like that. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, I'm super excited. Again, we're covering um, The Avengers number 6, Tales of Suspense number 54, um, Tales of Suspense number 55. Uh, Strange Tales number 121, um, Fantastic Four number 27, and then Strange Tales number 122. Yep. The lowest a main story gets from me out of this is a three. Out right. of all these. A couple of the side stories, uh, one of the side stories actually gets a two, one of the side stories actually gets a four from me. Okay. Um, there's, again, it was a much better week than I expected. I thought it was just going to be downright terrible. Well, because when you hear Stranger Tales or Tales of Astonish, you already know what you're going to get. You know you're going to get some bullshit. Mm. Tales of Astonish is usually pretty good. Okay. That's Iron Man. No, it's Tales of Suspense. Oh, yeah. That's uh, my wrong bad. one. See, ha- see, you know what? He off, too. <laughs> no, no, no. But we read Tales of Suspense. S- yeah. No, I'm saying, no, 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 no. I know Iron Man is going to always be good. I'm um, saying Tales of Astonish... You don't know what you're going to get. Like, when are you going to get something that you're going to get, like, the Beatle, for example? It's like, right. what the fuck am I looking at here? And so, the Stranger Tales, you just don't know what the hell is happening, so. So, give this week a chance, <laughs> because there's actually some good storytelling being done in these comics that are actually setting up. And then at the end Grand of our Netflix. comic corner, we discuss who our MVP is, um, like, or, you know. Who both of our MVPs are. Who both of our MVPs, which I like doing that now. I like that. So we discuss, like. Um, especially since we don't have our own little. Nope, we're not having a layout. We no, we're anymore. just going to discuss uh, it like that. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's uh, get into this. All right. So the first issue that we read is the Avengers number six. This is called Masters of Evil. Mm. Um, this was published July tenth, nineteen sixty four. Written by Stan Lee, penciled by Jack Kirby, inked by Chic Stone or Chick Stone. I don't know what. Oh, that's it, a new uh, person. Uh, no, Chick's been around. I don't know if he. Uh, he, he usually just goes by C Stone. Um, right. Okay. Yeah, but they, he has been around. They put his full name in. Right. Okay. All right. So, we start off with Cap showing off his shield skills and being sad about Bucky being gone. Right. We also learn that Iron Man installed magnets on Cap's shield for him, so now it can come back to him automatically. Hey, like the Age of Ultron. I love that. That um, shit's fire. Cap also vows to find the one who killed Bucky. Meanwhile, Baron Zemo is hiding in some valley reading a paper trying to find out how to remove the mask that has been glued to his head. <laughs> Instead, he finds a paper about Cap's return and gets mad because Cap's A, the one that made him that way, and B, he thought he had already killed Cap and Bucky. Apparently, he is the guy that killed Bucky, so um, that's Sorry, where that's, that's going to uh, go. That's foreshadowing, yeah. Um, Zemo tells the story of how Cap shattered the vat that was holding what he calls Adhesive X back in Nazi Germany. And it caused his hood to get stuck to Zemo's head. Um, he also tells the pilot to go find three people. And then later we see that those three people that he told to go find are Black Knight, Melter, and Radioactive Man. And they're attacking New York City. The Avengers show up for battle. Cap and Giant Man get quickly stuck to the ground with the adhesive X that they're spraying around. Right. Iron Man cuts the ground around them and tows them off with a tow truck. As Black Knight goes to attack, Thor interferes and stops him. The Avengers flee, and Zemo shows up, and his team basically apologizes for failing. But, 
to him, they didn't actually fail. No. Wasp calls the police station to talk to Pace Pot Pete, hey. and Pete tells her that in order for a shorter sentence, that he actually has a super dissolver for adhesives in a bin in his garage. Iron Man hands out, heads out, grabs it, brings it back, and the heroes are freed. And they plan to basically next time they go to fight, they're going to all switch villains to throw off um, anything because all these villains individually are used to fighting a specific person. Right. Um. So, da, 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 da. Cap also thinks he knows who's pulling the strings. He doesn't say who it is yet, but we all know. Cap knows. It's about to go down. Yeah. Um, the Teen Brigade sneak back in, replace the Adhesive X in the villain's cylinders with Paste Pot Pete's Dissolver, right. and then our villains head out. As Black Knight accidentally frees people instead of sticking them to the ground even further, he's attacked by Thor. Ant-Man and Iron Man attack Radioactive Man together, and Iron Man ends up capturing Radioactive Man. Mm-hmm. Um, he's then attacked by the Melter. Iron Man gets him to blast a fire hydrant, the water sprays him, and then Iron Man captures him as well. Iron Man is putting in some work. Right? With the with the shield and everything and shit? Like, but then again, he, that's why he's saying the command, unfortunately. Or, no, he, he's the leader. My bad, he's the leader in this. I'm sorry. Right. Right, right. right. Um, he's supposed to be in that. Actually, one. nobody's really the leader. They all work together. Oh, that's right. Um, but they also start showing that, like, there's some conversation that happens in this one that starts to show that maybe Cap might actually take charge. That's of what the I said. It's really like he's supposed to be the leader. That he's the one that just gives you all the new, the new shit that you. But that's cool. Use. But I said Iron Man is putting in work. I didn't say anything about Cap. And right. Your mind went to Cap because you just brought up his shield. Iron Man doesn't have. No, a shield. I said Iron Man like gave him shield. Like he gave him the magnetic shield oh. and all that shit. I know what I'm doing, it's mother. Fair. All right, keys at you, motherfucker. <laughs> Zemo ends up me. Zemo ends up hypnotizing the Teen Brigade, and then Cap confronts him. Mm-hmm. Um, Cap basically whoops his ass, Barely bragging convinced. the entire time about being American, fighting for the free world. You know what? That's how- <laughs> and pretty much telling him that he's gonna fuck him up. Oh my god! Hey, this goes back when Cap jumped in and said, "Hey, remember he jumped that last time? Cap jumped in that warehouse or whatever. Hey, what are we gonna do?" Because y'all ain't leaving out this door. <laughs> right? <laughs> Say, yo. He's like, y'all might beat me. Y'all might beat me. But it, but it ain't going to be easy. It ain't going to be Hey, yo, this cat um, is the realest one. <laughs> all right. So, the pilot ends up interfering and knocks Cap, knocks cap down with Mer- a bullet to the head. He had um, to. It, it scrapes his head. He down. had to, bro, because he was about to start going. And that's like berserk cat. He's like, mother. <laughs> like, he's um, like throwing his shit. And it comes back. <laughs> at which point... Uh, he then flees and Giant Man and Wasp show up. Mm-hmm. Giant Man captures the pilot, but Zemo gets away as all the others are captured. Zemo gets away in this helicopter. Cap then tells the team that Zemo took a canister on his way out, except it wasn't a canister of anything that they thought it was. It was actually a canister of tear gas. And at which point, uh, the helicopter starts to crash because he opened up the canister inside right. the helicopter. Um, and the police will then go on to arrest him. They don't actually show that happening, but he yeah. told the police basically to follow the helicopter until it, it, it lands. Right. Um, I gave it a four out of five. It was a great, up, great yeah, issue. Four out of five. Cap um, being Cap, Cap as per usual. Cap did his damn thing. Iron, Iron Man, Man though. Did his damn thing. Iron Man was like the hero of that whole issue, boy, because nice. he was he was capturing people left and right. And then we get a shout out to Pace Hot. PPP, let's go. PPP um, was in the in the jail. He helped right, out the engine. Hey, right. Hey, yo, everybody actually put in work. Oh, I was kind of hyped. Even, and it's and again, it is one of those things. This is where I get excited. Pace Pop Pete never fought mm-mm. Ant-Man and Wasp. Mm-mm. But Wasp knew who it was. Right? Because it's the same universe. Same universe. He knows about these Ain't that people. a bitch? They never attention. fought each other. And it's like, yeah, that, I, I caught that. I was like, yo... This was this was not a bad one. This was not a bad one. I, see, see, we start, we are starting out good. Let's go. We're doing great. <laughs> All right. Next up, Tales of Suspense number fifty-four. Right. This is called Mandarin's Revenge. This is the A story. This was published June tenth, nineteen sixty-four. Written by Stan Lee, penciled and inked by Don Heck. And this is like the second time. Yeah, I mean it's Revenge, but this is like what second, third time they fought each second other. Second time Mandarin's second coming. Time. Right. Okay. Alright, so, we start off with Pepper calling Iron Man to tell him Tony is needed in the office. Iron Man returns to the office. By the way, he's got a new mask. Um, yes. Which, it honestly looks like the old mask has just got these, like, circles that are outlined. The... Yeah, I mean, it looks cool, but I do, like, I do, I always will, like, his red, gold, hot, red, hot, your red, so. Right. 
Um, so he returns to the office, and then Pepper basically tells him that he's needed at the Pentagon. Right. Um, he tells Happy to inspect his other labs as he puts the armor back on for travel. He's realizing that he sent Happy on the run because he's actually jealous of the fact that there actually might be a romance budding between Happy and Pepper. Tony actually likes Pepper. He just feels like he can't be with her because of all the things he's got going on in right. his life. I'm Iron Man, B. I'm Iron um, Man. And, but this is the first time we actually get that acknowledgement that he's right. kind of like, I like Pepper. It, and it, I just, thank God it took like what is this like the the third the fifteenth issue? And he was like, and I kind of just shit on Happy for no reason, right? Because usually it took read like twenty thirty issues. Here it only took him like five issues. Said, yo, I think I'm digging Pepper. Right. Mm-hmm. But Tony heads out to the Pentagon. Right. Of course. Um, when Tony arrives, he is told that his photo-taking missile... So he has these missiles that, that go out, and they're supposed to take photos of things. Oh, that's um, dope. And, but they're being destroyed. So they're telling him, basically, that, they're, that he sold them faulty equipment. He's like, no, they were all perfect when I sent them to you guys. Right. I'll go figure out what's going on. Um, so he actually goes out to the Orient on his own without the Iron Man outfit. Right, you think he would have... I, I thought he was going like to go in as Iron Man, but I guess that wouldn't make sense, I or, guess. Or no, he goes to the launch site. The launch and site. And that's where he realizes that Mandarin is probably the one shooting them down. Right. Um. So, after a brief recap of their last encounter, because they show basically what happened between him and Mandarin last right. time, um, Tony heads out as himself to be captured by the Mandarin and does indeed get caught. Um, as the Mandarin's guards try to get into Tony's briefcase, it leaks sleeping gas. And while they're all asleep, he puts on the Iron Man armor, crashes through the wall to confront Mandarin. Mandarin drops a wall on him, but Iron Man gets up, and then a man- Mandarin tries to electrocute him. And, but then Iron Man gets back, gets up. back up. Mandarin offers a team up, and Iron Man basically says, fuck off. I was tripping on that. I said, did the mayor just say, hey, maybe you and I can work together? Why would he do that? Right. What? Mandarin has Iron Man's back against the ropes. Mandarin keeps leading Iron Man into different traps, but Iron Man gets out of each and every one of them. But finally, Mandarin blacks out the rooms, basically turns off the lights. Well, that's when we do it. Um, and wraps Iron Man in some cables, and at this point, Iron Man's energy is really low. He's unable to break free of the cables. Um, and at which point, the Mandarin activates his computer, and the castle that they're in starts to levitate and fly right. off. I don't know what that was all about. Yeah, but, that was weird, but sure. Um, that's how it ended. Yeah. I gave this issue also a four out of five. Yeah, four out of five. Iron like Man. I said, Iron Man is good. The Avengers is good. Fantastic just, Four is amazing. Yeah, well, yeah, they 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 actually improved like like the last ten issues right now. So, yeah, it's just get the strange tales those times. I don't know what the hell I'm gonna get. So, let's <laughs> you know, next up. Is the C story in this issue, and it's called Hands Off. This is written by Stan Lee, penciled by Larry Lieber, inked by Chick Stone. So, it's a Watcher tale. Um, we get a quick recap of why the Watcher can't interfere, as we saw the last time that we had one of these. Um, present time-ish, aliens decide they're going to put their toxins into space to save their planet, knowing that it'll eventually land on another planet and kill all life on that planet. Right. Um, Watcher sees this and sees that it's heading towards inhabited planets. He wants to stop it because he's like, these people don't deserve this. But he's like, but I've I've been told to just watch. So he decides only to watch when superno- when a supernova, um, which is an exploding star, right. um, sends a planet that has nobody in on it. It's an uninhabited planet hurtling over towards an actual inhabited planet. Um, and he feels like he's about to watch this planet of whatever it is die. He's a, right. Another alien planet just die. Wipe out. However, the poison cloud drifts between them as it happens. And the uninhabited planet runs into the poison cloud and it explodes and takes out both it and the poison cloud, which actually saves the, inhabit- the inhabited planet. That's so weird. Um, what are the odds? At which point the Watcher realizes that maybe the fa- may- maybe he should leave things up to the fates. He shouldn't get involved because had he got involved, that uninhabited planet would have destroyed these people. Um, so at that point he realizes, I should only watch. And I also should only give this issue, or this story, a two out of five. Um, yeah, I don't care. 
it was an interesting story. I mean, that's, I mean, hey, if you're a Watcher fan, which I'm pretty sure people were, they're, I guess, in that little situation, but I don't care. Well, they're developing... Here, here's the thing that sucks. They're developing the Watcher as a character, and, right. I, and we know that the Watcher is going to become more of a central point in some stories later on down the line. Right. And right now, they're building up this character as somebody who follows the rules and only watches so that way when he does interfere it's because it's something drastic because we know he's going to interfere well, yeah like when Galactus comes down or Thanos comes down then it's like oh, I gotta go interfere somehow uh, but uh but yeah so it was still a boy <laughs> okay he said I, and I wish I would only give this like a like a 1 out of 5 or a 0 out of 5 or whatever I'm like yeah that's but yeah I gave it a 2 yeah I gave it a 2 I, just, I, I mean hey it sounded cool but I don't care <laughs> it's Sounded cool as shit, man. Good job. <laughs> right. Um, oh, so next up is Tales of Suspense number 55. Right. Story A. This is called No One Escapes the Mandarin. This is published July 10th, 1964. Written by Stan Lee, penciled and inked by Don Heck. I like these little continuations, too. I mean, I mean, sometimes it, it works out, though. Like, like when we do Fantastic Four, we, we get tired of Doom, when it's all Doom, but... This Mando story is not bad, actually. Well, I don't mind continuation stories. Right. I don't like the issues where it's like, we just fought, like, uh, no, it has not happened, but right. this is just an example. Where, like, in the issue, they fight Mole Man, and then they defeat Mole Man. And if in the very next issue, Mole Man comes back right. to do something, then I'm like, beat him. I'm like, no, give me a few issues like, with other Like, Samaritan took off. He, he, he went on a castle somewhere. I'm, I'm leaving. Like, I ain't trying to fight this motherfucker. <laughs> You say he went on a floating castle in the last issue. Iron Man was captured. Yes. Iron Man is with him. Iron Man is with him. Yeah. Iron Man is with him. Um, but it's not Iron Man. <laughs> Y'all, it's going to keep this It's not anyways, Iron Man, bro. <laughs> I do like to be continued issues. Now, Iron Man tricks Mandarin into looking for Tony Stark. He's basically like, hey, look, you've got me captured. But Tony Stark's running around somewhere here, fucking shit up. Right. Um, and when Mandarin goes to look for Tony Stark, he builds up just enough power to be able to break free of the cables. Yep, just enough. Um, at which point we get a quick little recap of last issue. And back in present time, Iron Man follows Mandarin to where the missile's location is. Um, another missile is launched by America, and Mandarin gets a warning light that it is happening. Mandarin jumps in his ray gun... And is about to basically drag the missile down. And Iron Man leaps out and basically gets Mandarin out of the machine. Right. Um, at which point he flies out, deviates the missile so that it doesn't get caught up in the ray that was shot. However, as Iron Man knocks the missile off course, the ray ends up grabbing him and starts to drag him in. Right. Um, through the window and he can't get out of it. As he comes through though, he grabs a chunk of the windowsill. And hurls it at the ray gun, causing it to explode. At which point, Mandarin gets pissed and tries to melt Iron Man with one of his rings. And Iron Man flees. Mm. As Iron Man's running, he falls into a trap door. Meanwhile, we get a little thing where Happy's off running the company and is super stressed. Nothing's working out for him. He's having a bad time. Pepper's giving him shit. He's um, like, I can't do none of this he's shit. He's like, I wasn't built for this. Right, you know... He's he like, a, I now have a newfound respect for fucking uh, Tony. Because right, I don't know how he deals with this shit. Because he gave him run the company. He's like, I don't want to run the fucking company. Batch. Get your batch. Batch. Um, <laughs> so, back with Iron Man. As he's about to fall into a vat of acid, he breaks through the wall. Right. wall um, at which point, he then has a sheet of metal dropped on top of him by um, the Mandarin. Which causes him to fall through the floor. He then sees a giant version of Mandarin and as he goes to attack he breaks through glass so it was just a, a, an illusion. Right. Um, Mandarin then uses his best Naruto impression and creates millions of copies of himself and <laughs> Iron Man <laughs> then has to see I mean my Iron Man figures out who the real one is and he punches the shit out of him. Without any hesitation punch the holy shot him. goodbye. Um, Iron Man then rushes into the missile room sends all the rockets back home and um, Manages to hitch a ride in one, yep. and then destroys fully destroys Mandarin's ray gun. In the rocket, he becomes Tony again, and upon landing, he is picked up by an army jeep, and then he goes home. Finally, back at home, Tony and Pepper are being, being driven by Happy. They're both in the back seat. She looks like she's practically in his lap, so they're really close. 
Um, and Happy close. is not happy about this personally. Well, he, of course, no he, did, he doesn't like them sitting so he, close to each happy, other. Happy happy with the happy situation. Um, so he decides to try and find a bumpy part in the road. To that get is them, the most. To get them to separate. Um, but in the process, he blows a tire and he is forced to fix it while Tony and Pepper walk off to go look at the sky and oh, moon and stuff. And that's God. how the issue ends. Poor Happy. Happy just um, wants Well, to so here's the thing that does happen. At some point, something, a budding relationship does happen and Happy well, and Pepper actually end up getting married. Right. Wow. I don't know how long in the future this is going to be, exactly. but it does eventually happen. Right. Um, but as of right now, I'm loving the relationship aspect where Tony's finally starting to kind of be like, I really like her. Right. I'm pretty sure she's going to almost get killed, which is going to cause him to start fucking with her, or stop fucking with her, because that's what always happens. Because oh, yeah. you heroes are assholes and dumb, and don't realize that it's up to the woman. It's not up to, like, don't be that guy that's like, look, my life's too dangerous, I can't put you in that. Oh, you mean, uh, 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 Spider-Man. spider chat. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I, can't, I can hear it. It's too dangerous. It's too, it's, well, you shouldn't be here. You should not be here. Um, I gave this issue a 4 out of 5, though. Yeah, uh, 4 out of 5 for that bad. See, 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 I told you, all these Iron Mans and Avengers are going to be cold. Let's get the other shit strong. I'm going to have a little problem with All right. Tales of Suspense number 55. This is story C. This is called The Sun Stealer. This is actually, in my opinion, the best Watcher issue so far. Okay. All right, so The Watcher, uh, this is, by the way, written by Stan Lee, penciled and in ink by Larry Lieber. Um, the Watcher observes Earth as a spacecraft from another galaxy lands on the moon, which is where he's stationed. Right. An alien comes out and asks the Watcher for help, and Watch is like, I only watch. <laughs> so help then, me. No. <laughs> so then, the alien gets excited and is like, good, I was testing you. I know you've been here, and since you can't help, you won't be able to stop me from what I'm doing. And... Basically, he tells the story of how in his galaxy, the sun is burning out, and it's almost too cold to survive on his planet. Right. So his plan is to run tests on this solar system's sun, and then send his people out to come basically kidnap our sun, the yeah. Earth's sun. Take their sun, right. They're going to take our sun so that they can continue to live on. Um, the Watcher then starts to ask him for more information. The Watcher's like, you know, what are you doing this? Why is this happening? What's this going on? <laughs> right. And, right. Take our fucking son. And the alien's like, you know what? I know you're delaying, but since you can't stop us, I'll go ahead and answer every question you've got. What? Exactly. So he goes through and he starts answering questions. Answering questions. Yeah. I mean, you're just watching um, so At which point, the alien is like, all right, I'm done. And he turns and looks, and his ship is actually almost fully sunk into a bog that is on the moon and the alien realizes that he can't get to a ship he can't call for help oh, his yeah. oxygen's about to run out like and the only way to refill the oxygen is to get on that ship at which point he turns back to the watch and he's like look can you please help me i'm going to die and our people are going to die if if, if you don't help us and at which point the watcher's like look all i can do is watch I think I realized why you like this episode. The reason this gets a four out of five for me is the Watcher interfered, but not in a way that he directly interfered. All he did was ask questions. Right. Which completely fucked up dude's plan and got him and his race killed. I'm just saying, Watcher is savage. Sneakily savage. He's like, nah, all I can do is watch. Peace. I give it a three out of five. I give it three out of five. It, 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 it's still a storytelling, and but I did like the fact that he didn't give a damn. And I think I just I thought of you, Nick, when I'm reading this. I said, "Oh, this is some diabolical shit." He did not give no fucks that this man was dying. Not just race, but he was dying. Like, right? Help me. Uh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> and they keep repeating. And they just keep repeating. I only watch, bro. Like, I'm, I'm... do you work here? No, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I don't work here. I don't work here. I'm sorry. It's just one of those types of moments. It's like, please help me. <laughs> this is funny. It, was, it was fun. It's some funny shit. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Dick. I don't know, right? I it. It, it just looks at him like, yeah, you know, you be alright. <laughs> alright. Next up, Strange Tales number 121, yeah. story A. <laughs> this is called Prisoner of the Plant Man. Oh, uh, yeah. This is written, this was published June 1st, 1964, written by Stanley Pencil and inked by Dick Ayers. You have failed me, Dick Ayers. I wouldn't even been in here. I would, I, would put, I would erase my whole name. Nope. Fuck you mean. 
Um, now, I do want people to know there is one thing about Strange Tales that I do get excited about every issue. And that is the Doctor Strange story. <laughs> right. Uh, Let's be Because he already know what... He already know what bullshit this guy be. Um, First of all, Plant Man, now, what? <laughs> with that being said... So, mm-hmm. we start with a quick flashback no. on the Torch and Plat- Plant Man's last meeting. However, now in the present day, Planet Man has made a new controlling ray and has designed a new costume, um, which makes him actually look like a little plant. You know what's fucked up? I was going to say, hey, flashback, didn't you like argue with your girlfriend about this shit? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like, like, wait, you was arguing, bro? <laughs> and... So, oh, shit, man. he sends a tree into Johnny Storm's house, which douses him with water. And No, it's fine. He'll be a flame one. <laughs> and he slips into Johnny's room. Johnny is too wet to be able to flame on. So, Plant Man locks Johnny in his closet, goes across the street, and robs the hotel. After Plant Man robs it, he leaves, and Torch shows up late. Doris Evans is there, and is worried that Plant Man is going to go after her dad since he's the one that fired him the last time we've seen Plant Man. Johnny vows to capture Plant Man for her. Johnny visits the Fantastic Four and basically is like, yo, don't interfere. I want to take care of this. And they all say, well, we're not going to interfere. I'm playing ping pong. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I'm watching TV. (laughs) But Johnny does ask Ben for something, which we won't know about until later. Yeah. That's how this shit goes. (laughs) Right. Um, Plant Man, meanwhile, monologues, and then... Oh my god, he and then, monologues, bro. And then sends a plant off to give Johnny a message. Of course. The note that the plant gives Johnny asks him to meet Plant Man in Central Park. Plant Man is actually outside watching him read the note, and then he rushes to basically try and meet up with Johnny at the same time that Johnny shows up. Why are you holding on to your crotch? I'm holding on my crotch. My mm-hmm. shirt. Did um, it look like I was holding my crotch? Oh, that's funny. <laughs> now. <laughs> I love it. This is about the most entertaining part of this whole entire meeting. Johnny shows up. Plant Man manages to take out Johnny's flame with soaked acorns. Um, Johnny gets captured by some vines, and during another monologue, Plant Man has his plants bow down to him, but that loosens Johnny enough that Johnny is able to run and grab Weed Killer. Plant Man orders for Johnny to be grabbed again, but Johnny sprays the plants with the Weed Killer, killing them, and then chases Plant Man into a nearby greenhouse. Johnny then tries to talk him into giving himself up, Plant Man tells him to fuck off, and Johnny signals the police. At which point, Plant Man tells him that if he doesn't tell the plants to do something within 60 seconds, Doris is is being held hostage and she'll be killed. And that's when Torch is like, ha-ha, that's what you think. But Thing is actually watching over her, and she is well protected. And at that point, Plant Man is apprehended by police. Later, Johnny shows up for his date with Doris. So here's the thing. I actually gave the story a 3 out of 5. It wasn't terrible. Wasn't terrible. It, it, it was terrible to be a one. It was not terrible to be a one. Ah, I swear to God, I thought we were going. I know, bro. <laughs> um, it's two out of five, though. Here's the thing I liked about the story, and this is actually going to lead into the next one. I actually, if I remember correctly, the next Strange Tales, I think I gave it a four. Okay. Because we're starting to see a different side of Johnny, mm-hmm. where he's not dumb. Right. Like, yes, he was surprised. He was soaked with water. He got locked in a closet in the beginning. That sucks. You know what? It happens. If you're asleep, you can't necessarily always be on your fucking toes ready to fight. Um, you're the Fantastic Four. You should always be on... I feel now, like this should be a promo of Reed saying that. You should always be on your fucking toes, homie. With that being said, though, he thought ahead of time. He knew that Plant Man was going to try and get at Doris, so he sent right. Thing to protect her. Thing did what he was supposed to. He actually had fun doing it. They actually showed a little scene of him pounding on some plants. That's fun. Right, yeah. um, and then he basically fucked over Plant Man, and you know, he said, "If you don't go to the police, bro, gotta go to the police." He said, "Damn, I got no, I got no other plans. I'm going to the cops." Yeah, I know. That's exactly where the fuck you're going, sir. Now, as far as the B story, yeah, this is the Doctor Strange one. This is called Witch Ca- Witchcraft in the Wax Museum. This was published June first, nineteen sixty four. Written by Stanley Pencil and inked by Steve Ditko. Doctor Strange gets a call asking for help. Strange sends his ethereal form, and it was actually a recording on a phone. Mm. Upon returning to his chamber, his, his body's gone. Mordo comes through and speaks out mentally and tells him that he's hidden his body, and if he doesn't find his body in less than 24 hours and re-enter it, Strange's body's going to die, and shortly thereafter, his ethereal form will also pass away. So, Strange flies out to find his body. Strange makes it through a bunch of traps um, that were set for him and finally arrives to the location that 
he, he his body was being held, but it's gone. Using his amulet, he follows a shadow form of Mordo, carrying him to a wax museum. Um, Strange does find his body, but he can't get rid of the spell that's protecting it from him being able to enter in. And there's only like ten minutes left before oh, it's time. Yeah, yeah, before everything's done. Um, Strange runs away, saying, "Look, if I'm going to die, you're not going to see it happen. I will not give you that privilege." And he flies through a wall and disappears. Um, at which point, Mordo is so excited about his inevitable win that he's not paying any fucking attention. <laughs> and one of the wax statues come alive and basically takes a uh, uh, some sort of like handkerchief or something. Yeah, like a handkerchief. And basically gags Mordo so that he can't use any more spells. So at which point, Mordo goes into ethereal form himself to fight off this new foe. Mm. At which point, Strange pops out of the wax statue to fight Mordo. And it looks like Mordo actually defeats him. Mordo lays into him with a bunch of powers and Doctor Strange disappears. Again... Feeling like he won, um, Mordo goes to get back into his body, but all of a sudden he's trapped by Strange in some sort of weird ball thing. Mm -hmm. At which point Strange tells him, you know what, now that you're no longer in control of your powers, I'm able to enter my body. But here's the thing, I'm not going to kill you. I have vowed to never kill anybody. He's like, but what I'm going to do is make you sit here for 23 hours to think about what you've done. I'm going to get in my body, and I'm going to bounce. I gave this a Four Peace, out bitch. of five. I like that. I like that. That it, it started out slow, but it picked up. And Doc Strange became that dude, like the Watcher. Like, bruh, he's because I, I didn't know where this was going. I thought he was going to just let him die. Actually, I said, "Well, Mordo's done." He he said, "Fuck you, bro. You gonna take your body too, bitch." <laughs> now I gave it a three out of five. Yeah, five. yeah. Um, it was still a good story though. I I really enjoy. Uh, because Strange I get because it's Mordo, but it's it's like a different take of Mordo in a way. Because I know we're getting tired of seeing Mordo, Mordo, Mordo. But this one was more like I, I, I thought I thought Doctor Strange was gonna take his body. I said, <laughs> like that's what I thought. Bye, bitch. Like and then just dip out. Dip like, out. I don't need your body. Or, I don't need my body. I got yours. Uh -huh. Then I thought they both were gonna just die. I said, well, we both gonna come astral form. So now what you gonna do? Yeah. We, you want to get rid of the spell? <laughs> so next up. Which gets my issue of the week, by the way, is the Fantastic Four number 27. Yeah, Fantastic Four. This is called The Search for Submariner. This was published June 10th, 1964, written by Stan Lee, penciled by Jack Kirby, inked by G. Bell. All right, so right. Mr. Fantastic oh, no, Mr. Fantastic has made a thought projector helmet and is showing that he's actually thinking about Sue dressed up super sexy-like. Hey, go um, ahead, bro. Hey, high five that. <laughs> ben then asks to try it on, so Reed puts it on him, mm -hmm. and Re or Thing basically thinks about Doom attacking, um, which seems super realistic to him, so when it happens, he starts to fall over to dodge what's being thrown at him, and Reed turns himself into a giant pillow to save Ben's falling, uh, or to save, basically saving the helmet, because he doesn't want Ben to crush the helmet right. by falling over. First of all, big and rock, that, that would destroy that um, bitch. Sue basically leaves talking about you guys aren't reading my thoughts, and she bounces. <laughs> at which point, Reed tells the other two that he's actually planning to ask Sue to marry him. Right. We're getting into it now. Let's go. M meanwhile, Namor is also obsessing over Sue. He's always been obsessed. <laughs> and <laughs> and he realizes no. she must be his no matter the cost. Man, kill this dude. <laughs> so Namor, Namor tells the few people he's got left that are still there. I say like five people? Um, what his plans are and they're like, you know what? You're stupid. Like, she and ain't worth it. that's how he lost all five of the people. <laughs> We're bouncing. Bye. <laughs> Poor Namor, and he had five people, and they all left. They said, bye. Like, this is fucking retarded. We're going to leave. Bye. So later, Namor sneaks in and attacks the thing. He knocks the thing out with sleeping gas. Yep. Um, Johnny then tries to interfere. He uses some sort of pill that he throws that creates a vacuum that keeps Torch from being able to flame on, at which point Sue interferes, and he tells her that he intends to marry her, but she's like, nah. And he's like, you know what? I just need 24 hours. And she's like, hours? she's like, I love, like, I'm, I'm, I'm with Reed. I'm with Reed. And dumbass. He basically <laughs> uses a gas, puts her to sleep, and kidnaps her. Wow, that's a um, my dude. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> later, no Reed way. comes in to show off the new ring that he right, bought. He was ready to <laughs> Thing and Johnny tell him what happened, and Reed flips the oh, fuck. I, well, yeah. No. Out. I have not seen Reed this pissed 
at all. That's what I was going to tell you. You know, you know where this is leading, right? Because Sue ain't here. He's ready to propose. They knocked out. Yeah, this is this is gonna be a good little episode or a good little a good little issue right now. Thing know. and Torch try to calm him down, nah. and he does finally calm down <laughs> enough, but then tells him, "Look, mm-hmm. stay out of this. Right, I'm gonna take care of this." Right. He goes, uses this device that is supposed to go out and find Sue. Mm-hmm. Thing and Torch they feel feel like they have to get to Namor before <laughs> Reed? before Reed does. <laughs> Um, He's just gonna kill him. He's gonna kill thing, him. He's gonna kill him, bro. Thing says something along the lines of they have no hocus pocus crazy machines to help find him, at which point Johnny's like, yo, that gives me an idea. I'll be right back. He flies into the sky and writes this giant sky message that's like, Doctor Strange, we need your help. That's it. Because let me tell you something. Contact Johnny Storm. You gotta get Doctor Strange, bro. Strange heads out in Crossover. ethereal uh, right. Strange <laughs> Doctor Strange heads out in ethereal form to answer the call. Right. Hello. On his way in, he sees Reed flying off in a helicopter, so he goes in to see the torch. And when he gets there, Torch explains what all's going on. Strange says he will look for them, at which point he uses his ethereal form to scope through the ocean. He finds Namor's hideout, who has got Sue held in some sort of prison bubble. Oh, dear. And he's, like, confessing his love for Sue. Oh, dear. At which point, he decides he now needs to tell Torch where they are. On his way out, he passes by Reed again, who is now sneaking in. We go back to where Reed is surprised attacks Namor. Wrapping him up, and Namor at this point vows to kill Reed. They battle oh, back and forth, talking a bunch of shit. Hey, um, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to kill you. Now if I kill you first, bro. And, 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 and Reed's actually whooping his whooping ass. His ass. That, and this is what this is what Human Torch and Thing, well, really Human Torch is like, bro, we got to get to Namor before this happened, which because Reed's ready to kill him. On um, sight. Like, that's on sight death, bro. <laughs> he don't have nothing else. You know, his clan is gone. <laughs> right. At, at which point, though, the Atlanteans do show back up to help Namor because they're like, look, we were a little too hasty. We'll help you like, out. We understand. People? <laughs> um, and so they they then show up to attack Reed. Now, Strange reaches Thing and Torch, telling them what happened, and he's like, "Give me one second, I'll be right back." He disappears. His body shows up, so okay. he's there, fully in form as Doctor Strange. Yeah, Doctor Strange is there. Um, he casts a spell that teleports them directly to Namor's castle. <laughs> Johnny and Thing join the battle. They have to, yep. Which pisses Reed off. Yeah, because he couldn't stay back. Because Reed, Reed's Reed like... Reed was ready to kill everybody, bro. Reed's like, look, I need you to back off. I've, I'm, I'm going to take care of this. Um, don't, we hear the and, old words like, yo, that's, a, that's not good, bro. And he attacks Namor. Reed is prepared to kill Namor. Yes, he's prepared to kill him. He's prepared um, to kill him. Yes. Johnny runs off, frees Sue. Yep. At which point, two of Namor's uh, guards start to flood the room that they're in. Sue blocks the pouring with her invisible field, right. and Johnny wells the, the, the tube together that's pour, dumping in the water. That was smart. Thing, like thing at, at the same time, is juggling Namor's other guards that are still there. <laughs> and so Reed has Namor completely wrapped up, but Namor slams Reed's head into the ground, seemingly yeah. defeating Reed. Yeah, he had a... Bro, well, because he was going to... Um, how he wrapped up? It's like he's going to choke him out. So right. yeah, he had a... Namor had to do something, but he was going to get choked out. Namor's, like a snake. Namor's lackeys end up trying to uh, electrocute Ben, but Reed gets back up and attacks Namor yep. again. Yep, come back. Come up, round three. <laughs> and Namor is like, yo, let's Sue make the decision. At which point I, I was beginning to think that she's going to be like, no, you're both a couple of heathens. Like, I don't want anything to do with either of you. That's where I thought this was going because that's normally where this type of situation oh, goes. So pissed. But Reed is like, no. Nah. No. <laughs> I'm fucking you up. Reed turns himself into a giant bow, bow. And, shoots, yeah. and shoots Namor into his own people like he's an arrow. Oh my god. <laughs> Namor regroups and aims this huge gun at them and basically gives them one more chance to surrender. And both Reed and Thing are like, fuck you. They really... Bro. Namor, oh Namor fires, Namor. but it doesn't even hit the Thing. Nope. And the Thing at first was even like, I thought that was supposed to do more. Like, right. didn't that do didn't anything. do shit to me. Dude, shit. At which point, Namor decides he's going to reattack, and then Sue. It turns out Sue is creating an invisible field around people. She's yep. making sure nobody else is going to get hurt at this point. Right, they think Sue's protecting. Her at people. which point, she tells Namor, "I love Reed." Right. Right. With you, yeah, there may have been feelings there, but at I never point, loved you. Right, never loved you. I love him. That's a. Anyway. At which point. 
Namor gets pissed and Which is ready. I don't understand Namor. I don't why you're pissed and he's, for, man. And he's ready to fuck them up. But, but, as Namor is about to attack, Strange teleports them all back to their sub. Um, Reed actually has this thought that maybe she might have only said that just to get the fight to stop. So he doesn't really know if she actually loves him. She has her own thought bubble, which she doesn't say out loud, but she does truly love him. She right. loves Reed. She wants to be with Reed. Um, and that was the end of the issue. Five out of fucking five. 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 If I could give it a ten out of five, oh I'd give it. God. Dude, this is This should have been called Reed about to kill people. Hey, Reed. Hey, no, this hey, is, Reed, this I is, take care of this. This what is mystery. You ain't stealing my girl. <laughs> you guys have heard of the, the, the Mr. Mr. Steal Your Girl? <laughs> Trey Songs. This is Mr. You Ain't Stealing Shit. My man said, hey, 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 you guys. I'll be back. I got to take care of some shit. Hey, yo, we got to get... <laughs> hey, the fact I was, that you and Chris, we got to go, bro. I was reading this in bed, and I was like, oh, shit. Because he read like, hey, because he came in happy, and as soon as he saw Sue go out, they knocked out, he went... <laughs> he just went like, like, straight serious. <laughs> like, what is... Read, read it to the bro. Oh, man, I've never... This is oh, a good, fantastic sport. It was sport. so good. It was so good. Damn. All right. Damn, 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 bro. I haven't seen... Hey, yo, Reed is... Reed bruh. Savage, dude. He became... Bruh. I don't know what's gotten into him in the last, like, 10 to 12 Does issues. He want that. He want that. Because the very kidding. first few issues, I was like, bro, you're a bitch, dude. You're, you're a, a bitch. bitch. I think it started with him saying... And now he's like, nah. No, it really started with that crossover, that first crossover. <laughs> he said, hey, you can get our morale. I said, okay, Reed. And then letting the planet die on... Um, Oh, what's that? On X Planet X, letting the planet just like go. I'm like, bro, he's he was like slowly just digressing himself into like a leader right now. So I I I, I gotta give it to the man, dude. Like he's literally becoming that dude right now. Alright. Yeah. So for the last issue, Strange Tales, number one twenty two. <sighs> this is gonna... this is called Three Against the Torch. This was published July first, nineteen sixty four. Give me this good fucking <laughs> Written by Stan Lee, penciled by Dick Ayer. Damn it, race her name, bro. Just a race that bitch. Inked by G Bell. It's like all right, we get an introduction to three guys, a reintroduction to the three guys Doom used to capture the Fantastic Four a while ago. Right. Um, however, since it, it was the guy, if you guys remember, uh, once they captured the Fantastic Four, he put them in another dimension until he was, they were needed again. Right. But since Doom was hurled into space, his powers waned and they automatically came back. Yeah, it's the spirit. Um. They decided they want to do something to make Doom proud of him because they know Doom will eventually be back. They have no clue where he's at. They don't know he got blasted into space. Right. It's but, my son. <laughs> but they're like, you know... We want to help Doom out, man, because we're Doom we just boys. We just want Doom to be proud of us. Right. So they decide... Oh, those poor bastards. To, they, they decide that they're going to eliminate the Fantastic Four one by one. And they decide that Torch is going to be first. And after Should a brief... Should with Reed. They, they actually have a brief <laughs> fight between the three of them. Yeah. Um, because they all want to be the leader of this little three-man group. And then okay. finally, they all agree, like, you know what? We'll all just do it our own way. We'll get, we'll, we'll get it done. So. Sure. They, later, Johnny's doorbell rings, and he yells for whoever it is to come in. Um, it ends up being Handsome Harry, who was one of the three villains, except he's pretending to work for a car magazine, which if you're going to get Johnny to do anything and trick him, that's the way to do it. Yeah. Like, oh, you love cars. Yeah, I'm with a car Especially magazine. Like fast and hot, like hot rods. Oh, man. That'll get him out there. That'll get him out there to do something. So mid-interview, Johnny realizes who it is, but it was a little too late, and the other two villains show up just as he figures it out. They wrap him in an asbestos blanket and put him in the trunk of their car, and they bounce. They take him and put him in this asbestos uh, trailer and leave him there tied up and head out to go get Sue. However, Johnny is like, I can't get out of the rope. I can't get out of the trailer. He's like... However, I know what I can do. And he causes a bunch of smoke to fill up the trailer, which makes people think that the trailer's on fire, which gets the fire department called. They come. They, they basically free Johnny. Wow. And he's like, all right, thank you. He's like, I got some shit to do. So. Not better than read shit, though, but sure. <laughs> he now decides he's going to take them out. Oh, yeah. One by one. I guess so. I mean, Yeah. Johnny hitches a ride on the fire truck and they go home and then he flames on a flash through the window. Giant Johnny quickly ties Yogi up with his own rope and hangs yep. him from the ceiling. Johnny then knocks Bull out with an asbestos door and then Harry actually tricks him into thinking Sue just walked in. When he turns to look, he shoots Torch with a water hose. It's a little training device that Sue would usually use when they were training right. for him to dodge. 
Um, Bull ends up grabbing Johnny from behind. Johnny gets super pissed off and flames on again and traps him in a fire in a fire cage. At which at which point Harry takes off in Johnny's car and Johnny actually uses wall of flames to lead him out to a beach. At which point Harry ends up getting stuck because the tires start to spin on the um, on the sand, and Torch captures him and they all end up going to jail. He ends up returning to the mess of uh, to a mess. Well, Sue ends up returning to home. House is super messy because of the fight that happened. Yells at Johnny at first until she finds out exactly what happens, and then she feels embarrassed. Right. So here's the thing. I actually gave this a four. I gave it a three. And the reason I gave it a four, and I, like I said, I think it started in the last issue, and it kind of continued in this one. Right. I feel like Johnny's actually using his head. Right. As a hero, you're not always going to be Wait, on top. On top. I get it. I get it. But when you're down, you have to think of a way to get out of the situation to share. Like I said, like, if it, if and, it gave me more sure you still, I think I'd probably be good. But, yeah, I, I give it a three out of five. Because he's, he's, he's using his head. Like, oh, it's just the fire department to get him get me. Right. He thought of, like, in the last issue, he thought of, um... What was the last one? That was the one where, um... Plant Man. Was, uh, Plant Man. Plant Man. Um... He thought ahead of time and had Thing go protect her. Right. It still keeps him out of his personal business in terms of his fight. But at the same time, it protects her. He knows she's fine. And he kind of knew Plant Man was going to use her to get back at him because everybody knows who he is now. Right. So he knows that she's going to be in trouble whenever a villain wants to do something. So he thought ahead. And in this one, in the, in the heat of the moment where he's trapped, he can't actually do anything physically, he's like, you know what? Fill this motherfucker up with smoke. The fire department will come. They're going to come save me. If he can maintain this level of thought and calmness when right. shit goes wrong, wrong, I will become more of a Torch fan. Right. As long as we don't go back to the whiny bitch that he's been through or most... Or doing dumb shit. Like, if, if he had said he was trapped, right? That's why I was worried to see what was going to happen. Because if he had said, well, I can flame on and I can... Even though I'm trapped and wrapped in a special with stops flame on, I can flame on I can just bust out doing that. And I'm like, okay. So you could have done that all this time where they wrapped your ass up. <laughs> He didn't bust out. No, I'm saying, I'm saying, like, I'm saying, this is, I'm saying, usual, typical, dumbass Johnny shit. Right. Like, instead of using his head, like, like, because we've seen it. Now you hear head doing dumb shit, arguing, complaining, and then you get this shit here. It's like, okay, we're, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Right. So, um, but yeah, yeah I gave it four out of five. I'm liking the direction they're going. Honestly, with the Fantastic Four as a whole, as a yeah, team. Yeah, just just the whole as team. Sue's finally admitting her love for fucking Reed, and she's become a very productive member of the team with all the things she's able to do. Reed's now. ready to kill any motherfucker that Reed crossed him. Now, is losing you, his shit. If you touch, if you touch my girl, I have to Johnny, kill you. Johnny's getting smarter. The only one that hasn't, I feel, still stepped up to his full potential is Thing. Well, I'm gonna say Ben. Kind well, but then thing. again, the fight ben, with Hulk. Yeah, oh, no, the no, fight no, with actually, Hulk. No, he was. I, I got just yeah, Ben. Ben, ben did Hulk. his thing. I because Ben I said the only way you want to do, we go, you want to kill me. And I'm like, okay, I'm in it. I'm invested. So, Let's go. So it's great. So we're finally getting all these stories where all of these members are shining as characters, and as long as we can keep going in this direction, again, as it stands right now, had this been me, if I was a kid reading these, I would actually probably be more. Excited for even Fantastic Four than Spider Man right now. Right. Well, because they, well, if you think about it, we weren't getting us, well, during that time, they weren't getting as much Spider Man. So, yeah, they were. Really? They're getting a Spider Man issue every every month. Same oh, as well, Fantastic Four. Month. Yeah, right, 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 um, right, 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 right. But. I wanted to be like a Fantastic Four, maybe like, like, like two Fantastic Four issues every two months, so, but, you know. No, they're only getting one. Okay. All right, next up is Strange Tales Story B from 122. This is called The World Beyond. Right. Um, this was written by Stan Lee, penciled and inked by Steve Ditko. Alright, so, Doctor Strange is tired and goes to sleep. Wakes up to a cloaked figure, and his magic is not working. Right. Um, Strange goes to punch the being, but his hand goes through, and he realizes he's dreaming and is in the nightmare world. Whoa. Um, Strange is then put into a ball and sent through several different dimensions, and shows up at Nightmare. Nightmare tells him that he'll never wake up, in the, and, and in this world, he is master. Right. Nightmare fucks with him some more, basically like he turns him into stone, and then he drops him through a bottomless pit until he decides he's done. And he's like, I can destroy you at any time. Um, at which point, Nightmare starts to monologue a little. Like, well, he traps, first he traps Strange into this like full, bottle, full body shackling thing right. that actually looks like a comic early version of that machine that we ended up seeing in Doctor Strange that wraps oh. around him and had him Oh, yeah, trapped. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, it's yeah, it's. Uh, but it looks like an early version. Like an early of version that. of it. Um, huh, that's kind of interesting. 
So strange. While Nightmare is monologuing, Strange summons the the Gogol, uh, which I've never heard of before. Yeah, it's weird. it looked cool though. It did look cool. Um, which is Nightmare's mortal enemy. Sure. Gogol ends up getting super close, and Nightmare feels he's about to die. And Strange tells him, "Look, if you free me, I can get rid of it. I can get rid of it." So Nightmare frees him, gives gives Strange his powers back, and all Strange does is a snap, and the Gogol Ghoul disappears. Nightmare's like, how did you do that? And Strange tells him, the ghoul goal was never real. I hypnotized you. He says, and I don't need powers to do that. And at that point, Strange starts to leave. you stupid, Nightmare. At which point, Strange starts to leave, and Nightmare's like, does his normal, I'll get you one day. Yeah, whatever. I, I vow my revenge. There. And I love Strange, because he turns around and goes, yeah, yeah. Right. I'll be ready for you then, too. Right, exactly. And he, and he goes back home. Did Doc Strange is a, a powerful Three out of five. Power. Still yeah, a good story. Three, three out of five. Yeah, um, story. I want to see yeah. them develop Nightmare more as a character. I feel like Nightmare can be a much more menacing villain right now. This is our first time actually seeing... Well, it's our first time seeing him full body. Full body. We've seen shadows of him twice, two other times. Right, okay. Because um, he was one of the first villains that Strange ran into. He was on the horse. Right, on the and horse. And Strange dodged him and got out. Right. Um, the this second, is actually full body version of him. The second those. time, Nightmare kidnapped the souls of like people oh, and we're right, bringing right, them right. in. So this is actually his third time actually he said fighting him. So this is his third time confronting him, but this is the first time we actually got to see Nightmare's face. Right. Which was cool. what, what he looks like. What but I gave it a 3 out of 5. Overall, still a decent decent story. Um, and again, like I said, not this bad, overall not week yeah, not ended up being better than what I went into. Like I was dreading it so much, I basically waited until like Thursday to even start reading them. And even then, I didn't even finish it until last night because I was like, I, I really don't want to read these. Like, I want to read the Fantastic Four. I want to read the Avengers, the others, like Iron Man. I'm neither here nor there about. But, and but that's what's kind then I started reading them, and I was like, dude, these are so good. Right. Finally. I feel like Marvel's going in the right... Now, it's not saying we won't have bad stories later, right. but... but And that's what's kind of sad, though, because we've been getting so many bad stories... From Strange Tales From specifically. From Strange Tales specifically, it's just like, okay, we're getting sore. You see, like, I, I, the only reason I gave it 2 out of 5 is because it's Plant Man. It's Plant Man. I didn't care about that. But you see, I gave this next one like a 3 out of 5 because it's like, okay, like I said, as long as we keep this mentality up, please. Now, I'm telling you right now, my motherfucking MVP is Reed. Mr. Fantastic. Reed, Reed Richards. Fighting for his woman. Said this Namor. ain't gonna fucking happen. Whipped Namor's ass. I mean, first of all, crossover. Secondly, goddamn. Like just, uh, <laughs> I have the words on that, bro. Like, hey, and then, and then he did the most leadership, <laughs> violent leadership. Hey, y'all, it's cool. Y'all, like, y'all stay back. I'm, I'll, I'll be back for a minute. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. He's like, what don't happened? get involved. I got this. I got this. I'll take care of it. Like, oh, bro, when you hear those words, I mean, he's ready to kill anything at any time that is moving. Like, that's moving. Now, next week actually has a great lineup of comics. Right. Great lineup. Can they be ass? Who knows? But yeah. We're starting off with Daredevil issue number two. Mm-hmm. And guess who Daredevil's fighting? Oh. Electro. Hey. So Electro's getting a little crossover. Guess who's making a special appearance in it? Spider Man. Thing. Thing? That's Spider Man? What? Thing. Uh, Okay. Yeah. So, we're getting some super crossovers here. I'm enjoying that. Um, we're also getting Fantastic Four issue number 20. Whoever subbed to my regular channel, thank you. Um, we're also getting Fantastic Four number 28, which is called the Fantastic Four versus the X-Men. So, we're going to get the Fantastic Four fighting against the X-Men. That's going to be The villains involved are going to be the Mad Thinker, Puppet Master, and somebody named Awesome Android. I don't know who Awesome Android is. But the Puppet Master's um, coming back? But that's why wow. they're going to be fighting, because the Puppet Master's probably going to make them fight. Yep, he's going to have the... Yeah, okay. So that's going to be a good issue. I can see that. We're also getting Spider-Man number 14, which is the first appearance ever of the Green Goblin. That's going to be um, interesting. Hulk is also in that issue. Which, that's weird, but I'll take it, sure. We're getting a lot of crossovers here. The, which, that's what we um, should be doing, because it, you're expanding this universe. Speaking of crossover, right. X-Men number 6... Submariner joins the Evil Mutants to fight against the X Men. So we're getting rid of that the the, rap, the trap master and getting them. I'll take that. Well, you know what? Because he's been getting his ass kicked so many goddamn times, he's like, "Yo, I'm about to go join a team. Fuck this shit." <laughs> and keeping up with the crossovers, the next one we're going to be reading is Tales to Astonish number fifty-seven. Oh, we got Ant Man coming back. Which Giant Man and Wasp are apparently fighting Spider Man. Clock. 
Okay, I can see that. Um, and in the solo story, though, you know how Wasp usually tells a story. Mm-hmm. I again, I didn't read. I haven't read the issues. I just read a quick synopsis. Apparently, Wasp is going to confront somebody on her own that is stealing from a store. See. That's what I want to see. Now, I want to see some shit like I have that. a feeling she's going to tell him a story, though. Don't get me wrong. I still I, think we're getting Wasp tells a story. Right. But I think it's going to be to distract him. Right. Until the cops get there to do stuff. So I still don't think it's going to be a great story. Don't get me wrong. These Wasp like, stories no, are the worst. That's the shit I want to see. Tell me a story about, about the time you are Wasp, woman. What are um, you doing? <laughs> and then our last issue, we're actually finally getting back to Thor after a couple weeks. Wow. Journey into mystery number 105. Thor Jesus. is going to be fighting both Cobra and Mr. Hyde at the same time. Oh, wow. The, uh, my MVP I picked a while ago. Um, and Damn. then the side story for that, because it is an A and B setup, is going to be the first time we ever see Heimdall fail from guarding the bridge. So, um, super excited. I do know the week after that we start off with a couple more Thor issues. Mm. Um and then lead into some other things that also have me excited about those. I won't go into those. We got a lot of crossovers those. this week. Holy but shit. But this week is like the week of crossovers. I'm excited, Which dude. Which should be because you're trying to expand this universe. Um, you're mixing up and Daredevil's getting involved too. He's he's going to be running into somebody from the Fantastic Four and one of is, Spider-Man's that villains. That is crazy. The X-Men versus the Fantastic Four. Submariner's Fucking side Green to Goblin's the coming in with the Hulk with versus the Hulk. Spider-Man. We're getting the Submariner joining the evil mutants. We got like, Puppet dude, Master controlling, might be even controlling the X-Men. This is going to be, in my opinion, what I think is going to be one of the best overall weeks yeah. in comics in a while. So I'm super excited to see where all this goes. And we also know Daredevil is also going to be crossing over with Spider-Man specifically soon. Right. I don't know how long it'll be, but it'll be within the next few Spider-Man issues. And that's when Spider-Man and Daredevil work together to actually fight um, the Ringmaster. And I only know of that because I again I have this the, the two little novel series the first the first two omnibuy of um, Spider Man from Marvel but yeah super excited for next week this week was actually this week was one of those weeks that it was better than I expected right so I'm hoping we do not get this next week's gonna be worse than I was hoping for I, I hope, hope these, these don't crossovers. suck I don't think they will. Right. All I've got skeptical is the Spider-Man Green Goblin with the Hulk. In it. That's just a little bone that I mean. It, it, it still might be a good story though. It's just I don't know what's gonna do with the Hulk though in a situation like this. But, Me either. But because right. remember he's been missing for like ever. <laughs> I I actually do kind of know what happens again. Oh yeah, yeah, well, yeah I've sure. read the yeah yeah I read. But it, so. that's pretty cool. I'm still excited for it. So, um, again, great lineup of comics. Yeah. We're getting. Spider-Man's arch nemesis, finally. And then Daredevil's second issue is literally him fighting... One of my favorite villains of villains all time. Of all time. Electro. That bitch? That's crazy. I'm here for it. Um, Wait, the, you said the thing is crossing thing. over with him? What? Okay, sure. Sure, Ben. All right, that's fine. He's walking around. Hey, there's Daredevil. I should go probably join him. We are getting some awesomeness. All right, so with that being said, guys, that is going to end it. Thanks to everybody that swings through. Remember, next week we are going to be watching... Um, for, for Monday's episode, uh, Lego Guardians. Lego Marvel Superheroes, Guardians of the Galaxy, the Thanos. Looks like Revenge. Theory, the Thanos. The Thanos attack? The Thanos. I think it's something. The, the, yeah, I think it's Thanos attack or Than- Thanos something. But it's it is Thanos, Thanos throne or Thanos. It, it starts with a THR. Right. Um, the, the Thanos threat. 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 Um, and then. Those are the six issues we're getting next week. Um, and again, I'm excited. Honestly, I'm more excited for next week's than I was this week's overall. We finished uh, Fantastic Four World Greatest Heroes earlier this week. Um, I'm just, I'm here for it. I'm yeah. here for it. Right. I'm going to have almost all this shit knocked out on Monday. <laughs> He's finally going to get, I ain't gonna he be able to, done one of those in a minute. Like, get shit done by I Monday. might even come into work Monday and be like, hey, Ralph, I'm done with everything. Alright, just done. I mean, I've already, I've read them all. Read I've watched all. the thing. Watched it. I'm here for it. it. <laughs> I'm playing video games all week. Right, 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 right. That's it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so again, next week, super lineup, uh, super stoked for all of it. Um, so with that being said, thanks to everybody that watches. We love you guys, and we will see you all. You guys are awesome people. We love all week. of you. Excelsior. Excelsior. Crossovers, man. Fucking crossovers.